legend has it that when the ancient gods assembled at the beginning of time itself, they consulted with Poseidon's personal architect to craft a fusion of sea and land that would stand as the ultimate example of divine beauty. They looked upon it and uttered, it is good. For thousands of years, mortals would make pilgrimages to admire the heavenly artistry in awe of the power and creativity of their deities until eventually their finest artisans, most skilled craftsmen and accomplished artists mustered their talents to give birth to an object so sublimely elegant, so perfectly proportioned and magnificently manufactured that the gods themselves were put to shame. I'm talking, of course, about the super yacht Impromptu that is not only a stunningly beautiful yacht inside and out, but is also a real tribute to the Trinity shipyard that built her, along with their designers and their engineers, who some say disappeared shortly after the launch in a heavenly rapture and are now looking down upon us. And if indeed they are looking down upon their finest creation, they could not possibly be happier with what they see. Without a doubt, one of the finest sun decks I have ever laid eyes upon. From the forward facing teak sun lounges towards the bow, to the expansive shaded sun pad aft and everything in between. But let's talk for a moment about what is in between. The sizable and beautifully designed dining tables taking center stage is a perfect setting for enjoying meals under the shade, but with spectacular panoramic views. The sensational granite topped bar with leather clad seating positioned within easy reach of a well-sized grill for enjoying barbecued mahi mahi. And the piece de la resistance, a hot tub of biblical proportions, so magnificent, so beautifully designed and incredibly well thought out. The only time you will want to leave is for a quick trip to the nearby day head. I say that this is the piece de la resistance, but in truth, this deck has another hidden feature that could be said to be an even greater blockbuster still. I'll be showing you that at the end of this video, and it's really worth waiting for. Moving down to the upper deck, and we find a dining table of even greater proportions, easily large enough to comfortably accommodate 12 guests on board. Now this area takes up the full beam of the yacht since there are no side decks at this level, a fact that's even more appreciable when you pass through the sliding doors and enter a palatial sky lounge. And it is here, in the Sky Lounge, that one starts to comprehend the level of attention to detail and craftsmanship that has gone into the interior of this super yacht. An inviting cocktail of exotic woods, lush fabrics and sophisticated stones merge to create a tasteful and elegant ambience that harmonizes with the tremendously tasteful exterior design. Moving forward, a day head is situated to port and a VIP stateroom occupies a winning vantage point on the starboard side. Needless to say, this area is complete with a sensibly proportioned wardrobe and an elegant ensuite bathroom. Impromptu is a super yacht 
full of surprises though, and a few steps further forward leads us to an upper lobby area, where temperature controlled wine storage has been carved out of the circular lobby walls. The door to the port side then leads away from the guest areas and into a part of the vessel usually reserved for the crew. Leading aft, we find a truly wonderful captain's cabin, befitting of the master of such an important vessel. Whilst of course, if we head forward, we find the bridge. Vertical windows here not only give excellent visibility all around, but are also a reminder of the seaworthiness of this ocean-going machine. And in fact, in a few moments, we'll be looking at the engine room too to get better understanding of her cruising potential. I wanted to show you the main deck myself though, to give you a sense of the size and the scale of this yacht. You see, Impromptu is just under 50 meters long. That's 164 feet, but she's a very big 164 foot yacht with a use of the space available that seems almost celestial in its origins. Here on the main deck, there's one particular feature that I've only ever seen done before on Trinity yachts. As you can probably see, this area here where the seats are is slightly elevated from the main deck level. Now Trinity do that for three very good reasons. First of all, by slightly elevating this area, when you're sitting down, you still have a much better view of your surroundings. Secondly though, by elevating a little bit this deck, they give extra head height to the deck below. Now below we have the water toy storage area. You can always get longer water toys in a certain area, but as they get longer, they get higher. So height is always the sensitive issue in a lazarette, in a yacht's garage. So here we get that little bit of extra height in the lazarette. And the third reason is that as you can see, by elevating this into a platform, we've made a very distinct corridor for the crew to be able to use when they're tying the yacht up. While you're sitting here with a cocktail, they can tie the fenders, do the lines, without knocking the cocktail out of your hands. I'm especially excited to show you the main lounge. I hardly know where to begin, but look over here alone. There are three different sorts of wood, at least, in this Tetra-style bulkhead. Then over here, we have a beautiful cabinet made out of wenge wood. Moving across here, I can see what appears to be burr with the most beautiful inlay and cabinetry. The craftsmanship is superb. I've been all over this yacht. I cannot find a single scratch. I cannot find a single defect. And the fact that you can have a grand piano here without it being in the way, well, that tells you something about the space available in here. Further forward still, we have this gorgeous dining room table, again, easily big enough for 12 guests. And once again, with this clever use of different sorts of woods and different sorts of materials here. Just behind these panels, we have a hidden storage area. So you've got space for your glassware, your chinaware, all of those things that you need to have close to the dining table. Even this beautiful etched glass panel is not just gorgeous to look at, it also serves a purpose as a divider into the central lobby and spiral staircase.
port, we have the galley, and I have to say it's a wonderfully proportioned galley too. But let me tell you a feature that's maybe not quite so evident because I've just passed by a door there that leads to a pantry. But then additionally, take a look at this. Here, we have a walk-in fridge with a second door inside that leads to a walk-in freezer. Now, why is that important? Well, because when we talk about a yacht that's a world cruiser, everybody, of course, thinks about the capacity for fuel and the range of the yacht. But it's equally important to have capacity for plenty of food so that you can fuel your guests too. This is an area of the yachts I'm especially excited to show you though. You tell me if you have ever seen an owner's stateroom as unique and as special as this. Here we have a little study area and this drawing room table alone, in my opinion, is something that most people would love to own. But walking forward, we find this huge walk-in closet leading to a beautiful light, and airy bathroom. It gives me the idea of, in the morning, performing one's ablutions in the bathroom, stepping out, selecting what clothes you want to wear for the day, checking oneself out in the mirror, ready for the day ahead. That is just one bathroom though, because Impromptu has a his and a hers. This one being the hers, and behind here, we have the his. But enough about bathrooms. Let's take a look at the main stateroom itself. And magnificent, doesn't even come close to doing justice to this area. Over here, we have this beautiful beauty cabinet, direct access to the hers bathroom. The television screen can be concealed behind these mahogany panels. Over here, we have a beautiful chest of drawers unit for more storage, for more clothes. But look at the head height in here. How Trinity have managed to create this much head height without ruining those beautiful, sleek lines of the vessel itself is quite beyond me. And consider the advantage of this much height. Up here, the owner has his own private observation terrace with fantastic views all around. The stairs actually open up, so underneath there's a storage area for suitcases and all of those large items that otherwise can be quite unsightly. <laughs> It's not just the owner who enjoys that feeling of being on a very special yacht though. The guests also enjoy staterooms with the same elevated level of decor, the same understated elegance and sophisticated styling that comes from some of the world's finest designers and craftsmen pooling their talents and resources to parent a child that truly does seem to be the product of an immaculate conception. Two double cabins separated by an ornate lobby within a lobby are neatly concealed towards the forward end, whilst aft, a wonderful twin cabin is situated next to another double. This one with a concealed door to the crew quarters, allowing easy access for the stewardess to access the cabins for efficient housekeeping. And speaking of the crew, let's take a look at the equally impressive space dedicated to crew on board. Impromptu is a yacht clearly built by a yard that appreciates the importance of crew. Not only was the captain's cabin behind the bridge impressive, but so is the crew mess, complete with a small galley and a laundry room. 
Here, an additional three cabins are situated, each with ensuite bathrooms, so thus far we've seen capacity for a total of eight crew in four cabins. There is another crew cabin though for the chief engineer, in the yacht's lazarette, another area worthy of viewing and of comment. Because here, not only is the chief engineer able to get easy access to the engine room, but there is also space for two personal watercraft as well as a host of other water toys. The engine room is always a favourite with viewers of YouTube videos though, and this technical space on Impromptu is extremely impressive. The vessel was built with two Caterpillar 3512B engines that, together with the two 130kW Northern Lights generators, went through what's called a top-end overhaul in 2020. Now this is an important service that needs to be done about once every 10,000 hours. This yacht regularly travels from the US to the Mediterranean on her own bottom, so the AC shore power converter is put to good use so that the yacht's electrical appliances are compatible with varying frequencies. And to get to the med on her own bottom, it goes without saying that the range of about 4,000 nautical miles at 10 knots is pretty useful too. Now, one of the reasons that she has that great range is that Impromptu was built with an aluminium hull and an aluminium superstructure. In fact, this construction method is something that Trinity Yachts are famous for, and it works very well. Aluminium is a versatile material. It's lighter than other metals, but it's still very tough and very seaworthy. But it's not just the hull material on this yacht that's versatile. I did say at the beginning of the video that there's something on this sun deck that I just can't wait to show you. And that is this open air cinema, allowing you and your guests to relax in the evenings and enjoy your favorite movie or your favorite YouTube channel. And that is something that even the gods would be proud of if they existed. Nothing to repeat, getting kinda old, feeling incomplete, truly like you told.